And away we go. It is the nightcap right here on BearcatJournal.com. Uh, it will be brought to you somebody on Tuesday, brought to you by somebody on Tuesday. We have a sponsor. So we're excited Hooray. about that. Hooray. Um, that will be unveiled uh Tuesday night when we reconvene for this show. If if you can pull the two of us away from college football. Or we could just start doing nightcaps, Aaron, while we play each other in a game. Don't threaten me with a good time. Right? Play the game, do the nightcap, like, while we're playing the game. <laughs> do it like Malik Van's interview right. with uh, Rocket Truth. <laughs> right, right. Just play video games. <laughs> oh, that was funny. Um. So, yeah, we'll uh, we'll work that out. But uh, excited to have the new sponsor in uh, Tuesday night. So looking forward to that uh, right before Georgia the Jungle, where Aaron talks for an hour and I play video games. Um, I'm pretty excited about that one. So uh, who knows if George is going to be with us or not, as he's going to yeah, be on well, um, Mackinac Island. Hey, and... Yeah, yeah, somewhere. Anyhow, uh, the, the biggest news by far of the day uh, our buddy Jason Shearer from the Arizona 24-7 site uh, kind of lighting a bomb and throwing it into the middle of the room. He sure did. And, uh, and sources uh, say that the Big 12 expects or believes that – read the tweet. I don't want to misquote him. Oh, I, well, I was not prepared for that. but I, oh, you, I thought you just had it pulled up. I said I've seen it. I didn't know that you wanted me to read it. Well, you're yeah. Never mind, I'll find it. I got it. Okay. According to sources, there is an internal belief in the Big 12 that Florida State and Clemson are likely to join the conference within the next year or so. It's pinned at the top of his Twitter page. And kind of broke Twitter initially. So um, this is something that over the last week has gone from Come on, no way. To and there's a lot of people that are pretty dialed in in the athletics world nationally that are starting to think this is the direction it's headed. And look, if you're Brett Yormark, isn't this like the, the most logical thing that he's done since he's been here? You're competing for number three. You are scratching and clawing to get as close to the Big Ten and the SEC as you can. What better way to do that than to take the two strongest football brands from the conference you're fighting for number three and yeah. send that conference into disarray? Like, I mean, the only thing that doesn't make sense is the SEC and Big Ten passing on Florida State and Clemson uh, completely. There's logic behind it. I'm not to say not to say that. More so, uh, more, more so for the Big Ten, I guess, than for the SEC passing on them. As the, it's very, very important to the Big Ten that a school who is part of the Big Ten is accredited. Very, very important to them. And if you're coming in and you're not currently accredited, it is not a quick process. It's not like you can call a, a buddy and rub some political shoulders if you will, and, and make the, make that happen quickly. Otherwise, why wouldn't they have already done it? So that's the Big Ten problem. The SEC problem is Florida State and Clemson don't really move the needle in the SEC because they already have Florida. Like, they, Florida, they don't need help Florida, in the state of Florida. Florida. Florida does not want them. Florida right. and, and South Carolina do not want them. Clemson. Sorry. And, and the SEC, yeah, yeah Florida, South Carolina does not want Clemson. Right. Because they're right next to each other. Well, the SEC already has the South Carolina market with South Carolina. Like, right. sure, Clemson is, is strong, but South Carolina is not exactly, uh, you know, Florida or Texas or Ohio or Cal like. It's not, it's not the recruiting state. Right. It's not the recruiting hotbed that some of the other states are, correct? 
there's a lot of good football down there. Like it's a warm yes. weather climate, so there's going to be a mm-hmm. lot of good football. But I mean, just in terms of like market share, like the things that matter are mattering now in college sports. Having South Carolina and Clemson, like you are, the needle's already here. Maybe it moves into like there, but you're not going into a market that you don't have starting from zero and all of a sudden taking North sure. Carolina. It's like a flagship state institution. If you're trying to build your brand out, as it seems that the Big 12 is certainly trying to do, uh, the, the SEC already has their brand in that state. They already have right. an arguably as big a school. When South Carolina is good, South Carolina is really good. And they move the needle as much as when Clemson is good. So what, right. what more do you want out of that state, I guess? What more do you want out of that market? I'm with you. I, I Having both schools, it's not really going to move the needle all that much in that right. state. You already have the needle moved. Like, you've moved the needle. There is no, like, you don't have to, to like, you know, match the red. You'd like to in every state, but you don't have to in that, in that situation. You already have a large chunk of South Carolina. You already have a large chunk of Florida. So the SEC doesn't. While the SEC might have them, they don't need them. And sure. academically, they don't meet what the Big Ten looks for. Right. So that does leave both of those schools who are, I mean, I, I don't think they can go just go back to the ACC. Like well, nothing not, happened. Not until the, the lawsuits are done, right? You're in the middle of trying to sue we your way. Drop the lawsuits. Sure, but I mean, you've you've already ruffled all the feathers. It's you. You also still right. have to put the feathers back in place. Well, I mean, what could be different though? That this that's what makes this interesting, right? What could be different is they could have just learned fully that like the Big Ten and the SEC aren't going to make a move because they've already made all you know they've yeah, already I mean, made a ton of moves. So they don't need to make any more moves right now. Did they just get that? Like that final piece of information, perhaps. I mean, and then most, you might most, be like, "Well, shit, we might as well stick here." Most of the rumors swirling around the Big Ten expansion is that they don't want to expand until Notre Dame is available. Right. Who knows if that day ever comes? Truthfully, right. So um, the only, the only other option Florida State and Clemson would have, because I don't see going back to the ACC as an option for them. They 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 hate the yes, the ACC and I guess they're they're upset that they watered down what already is an issue with letting SMU in when you already have media rights yeah. that they don't they don't love their media deal and granted SMU is not taking anything for, for I believe a decade uh but you still are until 2036 yeah you're still until watering the down TV deal. you're still you're still watering down a share that they don't they already don't care for uh, I did see somewhere that if Florida State and Clemson leave the ACC, there are apparently people are speculating that it, it it's going to cost the ACC roughly about two hundred million dollars if they leave. Sounds about right. I mean, short term sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know about well, I don't know about you, but if you're able to take two hundred million dollars from the ACC and insert it into the Big Twelve into your bank account, sure. <laughs> that's 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 something to be said there. Um, I, I just one of the one of the things that I've seen in, regarding this transition, if they were to come into the Big Twelve, is that they could potentially be taking a larger chunk from the media deal than the other teams that are currently in the Big Twelve. I don't love that, and depending on what you're, we we did find out in the last week or so, it, it was confirmed that Colorado took two point five million to come into the Big 12. Of course none of the None of the other corner schools got that, though. Colorado right, was the only because, one to set off the domino effect. Right, because Colorado went first and set right. off the rest. Correct. That said, I'm curious to see what it's you going to You get a signing cost. bonus. You get a signing bonus for making shit happen, Aaron. I'm just curious <laughs> what it's going to cost. I, I just don't want to see the Big 12 in a situation no, where there are lopsided payouts because that that's yeah. – We've, we've seen that happen before, and I truly, in the, my heart of hearts, I believe that is the beginning of the end when you start doing lopsided payouts because you're, especially for a new member, 
coming in. It 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 puts you in a bad spot. It sets a bad precedent. Like it 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 puts those two new members in the two biggest chairs, like here, like instantly, immediately, and that's not a good look. Especially remember, this isn't a conference that's that's now got years and years and years and years of camaraderie of people working together. Right. You've got the eight. And then you've got the new eight, and then you'd bring, be bringing in two, if not, I don't think they'd stop at Clemson and Florida State. I'd be shocked if they stopped there. So you go two, to 20, let's two, say. four? I, I would guess four total to get you to 20. I've um, seen rumors as, as many as six. Six. I, yeah. six. six is a tough pill to swallow for me, but if you're trying to destroy the ACC and make it to where – you take the, the members that are in currently from 50 million closer to that 100 million to where the, AC, right. the uh, SEC and the Big Ten are, then you're going to have to really pull some things. And if you if you just dismantle the ACC entirely, there's well, some money it's too to be, big to dismantle entirely, but well, you, you can gut it. The Pac-12 still isn't dead, but they're also not getting the money's gone. The well yeah, is dry. Got a lot. Point being. We talked about this before. The ACC has so many more members than what the Pac-12. Like the Pac-12 fell apart because they knew there wasn't enough to hold it together. I'm not saying that the conference would be I, dead, Aaron. I'm talking about a, just a sheer numbers game. There are 16 teams in the ACC, like or whatever it is now, 18, whatever. So even if you took four, my point being, they would have 14 left. They would have a whole conference left. My point is how much money there though is going to be spent. Like, sure. Is is ESPN at that point pulling the deal that is already on the table and like, no, nah, that's too much for us to pay you even from the worst deal in all of the power conferences. The crazy part is that they, this is the dumb part of doing a long-term deal. When they signed it, it was as good a deal as anybody else had. It was the best. It was the best. And then, but they went first. And then everybody else got a deal better than them, also Unless shorter years. than them, five, <laughs> six years instead of 15. So they're missing like three cycles of pay yep. jump. So uh, my, my, just my point being, the ACC is not going to go away, but no. you, can, you can severely weaken it. You can widen the gap pretty substantially. If you are surgical on who you take with the next two outside of Florida State and Clemson, because those would be the two kind of high profile programs that you're looking for at the top of the marquee in the Big 12 that they don't I have now. If I gave you a wish list of four teams uh -huh. on top of on top of Florida State and Clemson in that order where it's two and two. Who would be at the top of that next two and then the following two? Huh. So the question is, if you could get North Carolina and Virginia, like if the Big Ten didn't jump all over North Carolina and Virginia, I think it would have to be North Carolina and Virginia. But mm -hmm. I have to think the SEC and the Big Ten aren't in North Carolina. They're not in Virginia. So both of those are substantial markets. And both of those are elite academic, like public, right. you know. So um, I think it would have to be those two if you could get them. Okay. So then. If if not, I mean, Louisville and Pitt, from a Cincinnati perspective, make the most sense. I think that at that point, though, you run into – how much of the needle is that moving for the Big 12? You're 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 hitting on two important football factors for the ACC. Now they might be middle team, but they're always right at the like they're both usually pretty good in football. Like if you take those two out of the ACC along with Clemson and Florida State, what what's left is my point. I guess I'm still I don't know. I, I'm looking at NC State. 
I, I like an NC State. No. 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 I like an NC State. I, it's, if we're looking at making the best basketball, I know they don't move the, the needle in, in football, but if you're looking at making the big, biggest basketball, Duke would have to be in that conversation. Sure. The I mean, the, again, Duke's problem is it's a very small private school. Mm-hmm. It does not have a large, like, like alumni base, it, it, but it has a big fan base, but it's all basketball. Like they do not, they're care not about top. Duke football at all. They are Neither the exact those... opposite of Ohio state fans. North Carolina and Virginia are at the top of my list as well. So you, yeah, I mean, those are easy. Those are the easy best two programs that would be on the market. After that though, I'm, I'm probably going Miami, Florida. No trash. I'm going it's Miami. Done. It's over, Aaron. They're they, they're done. The U is coming back Miami's, every year. Aaron, the U is not back. <laughs> it's coming back every year. The U is not back, bro. Selfishly, I think that would be a fun trip every couple of years to go down sure. to, the, to the U. I'm not against it. <laughs> but I, I, I don't think Miami makes a whole lot of sense. And I don't think NC State, like, I, I don't know. Duke, I could see because of the basketball. Uh, NC State, I just like they're North Carolina fans or they're Duke fans in North Carolina. You're not getting, you're not pinging the needle with NC State, I don't think. Um, like I said, selfishly, Louisville and Pitt, because then we have at least a little bit of a regional. You know, yeah, regional where you can go three, four hours, five hours and be at a game instead of, oh, I, well, if I start driving today, uh, I should be there for the game tomorrow. So maybe, that, that's maybe, that's it. Maybe Pitt could get their own stadium at that point. Who knows? <laughs> I that. wouldn't hold your breath. I hate that sticking. Me too. Uh, trust me, me too. Um, after that, boy, the pickings get real thin, real fast. Yeah. I mean, I don't really, I don't, I don't want Boston college. I don't want Syracuse. I don't want Virginia tech, Tech. Georgia tech, Georgia tech. No, like those are really the only six that I would even have, you know, the other 10 I can do out. They don't move the needle for me all that much. Yep, it'll be. Well, no, there seems to be there. The, the smoke is starting to bellow on the Big Twelve and uh, their 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 flirtations. I guess would be a good word at this point with Florida State and Clemson. We'll see. If, As if the when it happens, turns. we'll be here to talk about it. As college sports turns. Uh, we will see you tomorrow night for the BBP. This is the nightcap right here on BearcatJournal.com. NCAA comes out tomorrow. See ya!